Next, it brings me great joy to call upon two mentees from Cohort 7 who will share their journey, tips and stories. Ms. Lau Ngai Yen, or Yuan, as she is affectionately known, is an arts advocate, film and TV producer, NGO founder, with a string of international and national accolades under her belt. Architect Ahila Gunnison, an ESG advocate and certified sustainability professional. Ahila is also a regular speaker at national and international forums and a special advisor to the UK-based ESG Foundation. She has recently been appointed to two boards. The stage is yours, Yen. Thank you. This is such a cold room. It is um, really exciting to be here. And after listening to what Dr. Hijam said, I'm like, Alama, I cannot change my slides now. How la? So when I first got the chance to actually say something here, I was thinking, okay, I've got to share this because this article has become like the article that we talk about all the time lah, ever since. So I just want to show you what it is. Ah, this is me, always about adding value. So back in 2013, FT put out this, uh, it's a really long article, but it's really cool. I'm just going to take you through like two points of it, right? That non-executive director, a task for which no one men or women, is qualified. Why? Because they need to be supportive, intelligent, interesting, huh? well-rounded, mature, funny, huh? entrepreneurial, steady, objective, yet passionate, independent, curious, challenging, and more. They also need to have financial background and real business experience, strong moral compass, first-class all-rounders, specific industry skills. Who is that? Do we know someone like that? Like, really? Thank you. So buy it. Okay, belanja makan. See, the, then it talked about a superhuman. Uh, they need someone that's real with real life and real business experience. So when I first read this, I'm like, okay, I want this job. Because then you get to live up to every single thing that is said there, right? So that's amazing. That it's already like saying, that's you. That's amazing. You're walking like, Ooh, I'm superhuman. And then it says, they don't hire young people on the board. And you're like, why? Because young people got no life, no business experience, they don't understand the governance aspects, they will take time, and they only understand as they get older, they don't have the maturity to step back, and they cannot support when they need to. No young people. So when this article first came out, I was, you know, I can say that I was pretty young, uh, much younger than now. Many, many years later, uh, before my first board, this happened. The role of independent, non-executive directors are really way more challenged. And this list is obviously, you know, not fixed. It's continuously challenged. But I just picked like five uh, just to very quickly go through. We are working in a space where business are more regulated, way more regulated before, which is really good, to be honest. And then we're talking about diverse expertise necessary. And I'm not talking about one board with a lot of diversity in expertise. I'm talking about one person, one person with diverse expertise in the same person. And we are talking about greater pressure from ecosystem stakeholders. We're not just talking about shareholders' values. We are talking about increasing public scrutiny because they want us to be a lot more accountable. And we are talking about different kinds of complexities that come with the technology world and whatever that we're doing today, tomorrow is going to change. In fact, laws are not even out there for half the things that we're doing when it comes to the tech world. This is the world we're supposed to be the independent directors for companies off. Are we ready? How do we deal with this? And I just want to say this to all the new cohort. Welcome. <laughs> it's exciting, I want to say. And I also want to let you know that as much as companies are now have to look for you, you must also be the one looking for the companies. And how do you do that? How do you make sure that you are reading the right companies, that you are doing research about the right companies who are seeing you, that you are checking out the right companies for yourself. For me, I go back to this question. I swear, 
Ever since uh, I know this, ever since I was a child, my mother always said, quality of your life depends on the quality of your questions. Tim Robbins using that now. So I think he's seeing my mom. So I really think it's very important that we ask the right questions in our first meet with the nomination committee. Very important. And the questions that Dr. Hisham asked just now was also very important, but very challenging. I cannot imagine first what first you know nomination come and you're challenging them. Are you doing better? If not, you should go. We should hire somebody else to do your job. I think that may be a bit more difficult. But I guess what's important is to be really outright about is the company ready for us? I want to say I have been in companies that are not ready for us. And boy, it was difficult. Because the change you've got to, why do you need to do that? My first question is always, what is the board looking for? Are you clear? Are you just looking at you know, the matrix, the skill matrix thing that we are all quite accustomed to, which really do not have your expertise? Or you kind of have to maybe here a bit, here a bit, here a lot more. And why you don't have my expertise in your box? Huh? You have a lot of that. And my first board, uh, uh, past chairman, uh, Datuk Captain Ahmad Sufyan, said to me, hmm, good question. What we think is now a bit too comfortable. Agendas maybe can be more focused. Management decisions, not very stretched. My second question to them. How can I contribute effectively? What do you see in me that I can contribute effectively? Tiong Tik Len, founder, um, managing director, group managing director. We are looking for extra dimension. We want someone who will question the status quo, stimulate more experience sharing and uh, knowledge transfer, look beyond the business. That sounds like, if that's you, you're like, <coughs> yes, bring it on, bring it on. But the third most important question, how long is my induction to the company? It is, aside from, you know, browsing and reading and making it your homework, don't stop, eat, sleep, drink, the annual report book. You've got to know the company. You've got to be introduced to the company properly. You've got to have this induction period. Don't take, I don't know, three months, one year later and say, ah, now I get the hang of it. I've gone through one cycle. No, you want to be properly inducted. You want to visit the plants. You want to go check it out. You want to know who else sits on your board. It's really important. And voila, these are the questions I ask. I was inducted. Yay! I was happy. But I must say, after many years, um, balance, the balancing act, really, for me, is still the most difficult. Really, really. I have 32 seconds. Independence. How do you be involved with the company, but not be involved with the company? How, how do you be a part and be supportive and be useful to the management, to the executive team? But then you, during meetings, suddenly you're like a different person. You stand firm. You ask questions. You uphold the shareholders' you know, interests. We talk about governance. You want them to be innovative and you drive that. And then suddenly, in a board meeting, you're like, oh, this one got risk. La. This risk you understand. Not. What is the clarity here? So how do you balance this? I think this is the most difficult. But what's really important is also that we need to take time outside the board meets, really outside the board meets. We need to form relationship with the management team, understand them a little bit more, see what is not said and what can't be said just during meetings. Because then we know how risk averse or not are they. With that, I want to say, we got to be the force for good. So all the best to each one of you. You can do it, but be the force for good. Ahila, stage is yours.